Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gower College Swansea. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you today, and I'm delighted that you're able to join us too um, for this virtual open evening. My name is Nikki Neal, and I'm the Director of Quality and Curriculum at the College. If you have any questions along the way, then please pop them into the Q&A box at the top and we'll pick them up um, at the end or, or as I'm going, if I can if I can answer them as we, we get to the end of this section, then I, I will do my very best to do that. Um, you, you can ask your questions in English or Welsh and um, we will ask, answer them uh, back in the language that you request. Captions are available in both languages, um, so if you want to put on subtitles in English or in Welsh, then you can do that. Uh, in order to do that, you need to turn them on, and that's by selecting the captions and subtitles on in your video controls. Uh, and to change the caption language, select settings, captions and subtitles. Uh, and then choose the language you want. So I mean, reliably informed, that's how uh, that works. Um, as you're aware, um, the COVID situation is constantly changing. And while, while it's looking uh, as things are starting to open up, we felt that it was important at this stage to move to our open evening online. We hope that uh, if things keep going the way they are, that by the time we get to our March open evening, then hopefully we will be, we'll return face to face. So you'll be able to visit our wonderful campus here at Tikoch and see uh, the uh, facilities and meet the actual staff that will be teaching and delivering the, the courses that you're interested in. We keep our fingers crossed for that uh, and watch out for social media and the press nearer the time so you know whether it will be virtual or as I said, hopefully face to face. If we've learned anything from the challenges over the last two years, it's the importance of education. We understand that choosing what you want to study and where you want to study is a major decision, and we really hope that this evening's programme will help you. Studying at a large college can provide significant benefits in terms of choice. We have almost 40 A-level subjects and 40 vocational subjects uh, choices at, at a range of levels. This means that we have courses for everyone and there is greater opportunities to progress. Indeed, we've had learners starting with us on a level one course and actually finishing and leaving us with a foundation degree. Very proud of our reputation as an excellent college that provides outstanding teaching and learning experiences. The learners sit at the heart of everything we do and we're constantly working to enhance and enrich those experiences. We have a huge range of support services and wellbeing programmes available, particularly in these challenging times, and my colleagues will shortly tell you more about those. If you haven't seen the virtual experience on our website yet, my colleague is adding the URL into the chat. Now, if you're like me and you're a bit computer um, challenged, that means there should be a link posted uh, on the chat for you to click on to take you to text-based chat rooms. That means that the staff will be there, but they'll be a, they will answer uh, questions that you post to them through the chat, and they'll be in live time be able to respond to any queries that you have. So if you've got any questions about teaching or support, our subject specific questions, the staff are available and it's open now and it'll be open and available until half past seven this evening. So take some time to have a look through the courses, ask some questions and see how we can help you progress on your learning journey. We're also open for applications at this very moment. So if you do see something you like and want to apply, then please head over to GCS ac.uk which is our website and then you can find um, you can search how to apply you'll see the tab there and you can actually make uh, an application this evening i'm just going to now look at some of the questions that have been posed because i think i can answer some of those one of the questions that has asked am i able to reset my gcse's here if i don't get the grade absolutely we offer English and maths uh, reset programmes. Um, so if you get a D, 
uh, we would look to ensure that you reset in a year. If you get less than a D, then we will put you on a uh, development program to keep developing those skills until we feel that you're in a position and ready to do that. So in terms of the GCSEs, it's the English and Maths we particularly offer. What we'd recommend um, then if, you, if you've got more that you don't offer is perhaps to look at a level one or a level two vocational program or in an on August signing campus, then we do have a range of GCSE programs um, that you could arrange uh, one GCSE program that you could also um, enroll on. OK, I've got another question here, which I'm going to have a little look at. Um, this one covers about um, additional needs. But has and has a helper in class. So that was very specific. So um, that one we can, we will pick up and answer and we will um, reply to you very specifically. But we do make sure that you get the right support, right support in class as much as we can, but also very much in preparing you for any external or internal assessment. So we would take uh, each learner as they come and have that discussion with you. So we'll do that as, as a direct um, response um, for you. I don't seem to have any further questions. So this is the time now, if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'll wait a minute and if, if not, then I'm going to be passing you on to my colleague, Kath Williams, who's the Dean of Faculty and responsible for the um, TECO campus, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the courses here. Um, I've just had another one question come up um, that about uh, is a carer uh, and there are deaf that we have got uh, a member of staff that is that actually links up with any carer, young carer that comes into college. So you'll have a direct support with um, uh, with the carers, with the person who is responsible for the young carers, um, and they will then help and uh, look at what support is needed. So um, as soon as we know uh, that, if you make that uh, clear on the application, we can put that link in even before they actually, uh, your, your daughter actually starts in college. Um, Right, somebody's asking that they put application in uh, when we hear back. We're actually in the process in the next, um, we're going out to schools to do some interviews starting in at the end of January, early February. So a lot of the local schools, if they haven't got six forms, will be going in and do and running into his after school. If you're in a school with a sixth form, then you should hear uh, and be invited into the college. Um, hopefully, if that is COVID safe, will you be invited in then towards um, the uh, end of February, beginning of March time. So that's when you should be invited to come in for uh, an interview. The best time to put an application is as soon as you know which course you want to do. And don't forget, you can you can actually put an application in and put in for a number of courses if you're unsure, because actually going to those uh, interviews and talking to the staff might help you make uh, that decision for you. Um, so how can I find the suitable subjects according to my mock marks? I'm not quite sure that what what you're asking there. Um, I'll have, we'll come back to that question. Um, I think it, it's really to talk to somebody. I think it, what you I think what you're asking there is if you've got some good marks in some subjects and you need to think about the which is the best route for you afterwards. Um, then it's it's good to have a chat to somebody. If you're in in one of the local schools, then uh, we can we can do that or ring admissions and, and have a chat through because they're also yeah, our admission advisors are also excellent in being able to give you a range of options that might suit you. Uh, again, disabled access. We can we can um, we can talk about that to you, um, depending on which co course, which which area in the college, and how that will work, and what support we can give you. Again, we can do that directly. Um, my son is in year nine. Uh, can he come to the open evening? Absolutely. He doesn't have to be in year 11. It's never too young to actually start exploring pathways, particularly if that will help inform the actual GCSE choices. So we'd welcome you uh, coming to uh, an open evening, uh, either you know, and asking questions tonight or actually coming face to face in March, then that's absolutely fine. Um, the final date of application, well, 
there isn't a final one. I suppose September, early September is probably the final one, but ensure to, to ensure that you've actually get a place. We'd encourage you to apply sooner rather than later, because in some areas, some of the courses, we do have a cut off because of resources. We've only got so many workshop spaces, so we can't um, exceed that number, obviously, for health and safety um, uh, purposes. So as soon as you you know what you want to do, I would I would suggest that you apply. So um, the difference between sixth form and college? Gosh, that's a big question. Um, the actual, it depends on what course you're doing. I mean, I think with college, one of the biggest things is, is choice, is the size of the college. So we've got, uh, we're able to do a whole host of uh, vocational courses um, and give those opportunities. So you're in uh, workshops with um, up-to-date uh, industrial um, uh, facility. So, you know, the equipment that we use are, are the same that employers use, and we have very, very strong links with employers um, that help shape the, the curriculum delivery, the skills. A lot of our, our staff, um, while they are professional teachers, have also worked in industry, so they can pass on those knowledge and experiences. So I think that's one of the key differences is, is definitely about how we're able to develop the um, your vocational skills and pathways and also then having those strong links into apprenticeships if that's also what you want to do or actually if you didn't want to go away actually staying here and, and studying at a higher level uh, to do our degree programs in our HE centre as well. So, you know, I think it's the choice is probably one of the key things. I think, you know, in terms of care support, we actually do our absolute best to ensure that we give the same care and support as a school would. Um, you know, you have a personal tutor, you have tutorial time, um, they're the your key links like your form teacher would be at school. Uh, we have a huge range of facilities, you know, we have costas on site, we have a range, a number of, of uh, eating places, we have uh, a wide range of libraries and um, breakout rooms and um, common areas for students. So I think that's probably quite different, uh, or certainly in a larger scale. Than, than some six forms. But in the best thing for that is to come in and, and talk to us and see it when, when we're actually open. Um, so uh, if you've put an application and want to make additional information, then again, the best thing to do is to, is to give the admissions a ring and they can manually then add on some additional information for you. OK. Um, I think I'm going to I'm going to pass on to my colleague now, Kath Williams. We'll continue to answer some of these questions uh, as we're going. Um, but um, please continue to, you know, this this will be remain live. So as things occur to you, please put them in the chat and then we will answer them as the evening uh, progresses. Jochen Val, thank you very much for your time. And I'll hand over to my colleague then, Kath Williams. Jochen. Thanks with DARPA. Good evening, everybody. As Nikki has said, my name is Kath Williams and I'm one of three deans of faculty at Gowell College Swansea. And also I have the um, day to day responsibility for the running of the T Corch campus. So I'm the campus lead for T Corch. And it's about this campus that I'd like to give you some more information now. So at T Corch, we specialise in teaching vocational education. We have specialist teaching facilities aligned to every single course. So, for example, if you're doing a carpentry course, you will spend time in the classroom learning the theory and you will also spend time in the workshops, learning the skills that you need for that um, course and to develop yourself to be employable in that sector. Hairdressing courses and beauty courses spend time again in the classroom and in our specialist teaching um, salons where in normal times members of the public can come in and be uh, actual cl paying clients so that the learners can develop the skills that they need to work in that sector. The um, catering students, the hospitality and catering students also learn again their theory in the classroom and then they, this is supplemented by learning 
and um, developing their skills in the professional kitchens that we have. And we also have a training restaurant where they can um, then serve paying customers again in normal times. So I think what I'm trying to explain is that when you come to TCO to do um, a course with us, a vocational course, your, most of your time is spent learning the theory and also the skills that you need to develop for that area. Uh, our childcare and health and social care learners also go out onto placement where they can um, have real life experiences in the sector to gain their qualifications. When you're not in the classroom, there are some fantastic facilities available at the TCO campus. You're able to have um, a gym membership um, for a, a reduced fee so that you can um, look after your health and well-being as well as studying with us. We have a state-of-the-art um, learning resource centre which is well equipped with books, online journals, e-learning facilities, bookable PCs. So if you want to spend your time when you're not in class working on your studies, we have the facilities to allow you to do that. And then we go on to our um, sort of social spaces. We have a, a modern, large, airy, spacious atrium with a Costa's outlet where you can buy coffee and sandwiches. And there's plenty of space for uh, learners to, to sit around and enjoy their free time with their friends and, and classmates. And we also have a um, full uh, hot service restaurant called Cafe Metro, where again learners can buy their lunches and then sit down and enjoy it with their, with their friends. So I think that coming to the TCO campus, is, it's, a, it's a big campus. It has very specific specialist facilities and it's more it's, there's more to come into college than there is just the things that you learn in the classroom. So we really try to make it a whole experience for learners and to make sure that you enjoy your whole time at, at a TCO campus. So as we're going along, if you have got any questions, pop them in the chat and then we can pick them up. Either I can answer them or my colleague Tom can answer them when he takes over from me. So as Nikki touched on earlier, studying at a big college campus gives you plenty of choice, plenty of choice to choose the career that's right for you, to update your GCSEs if you need to, to learn new skills and to make new friends. And that's what tonight is all about. So this is the second of, of three open evenings this year. So please um, join the chat for the specific subject areas and try and find out a bit more of that specialist information. So for example, I can see in the questions that somebody's asked about a career in carpentry and is the level two um, site carpentry foundation course suitable for school leavers? That's a very specific question. I'd encourage you to join the carpentry team in their chat room and talk to them about the information they've got about that very specific course. So please join as many of the subject specific chat rooms as you would like to, as you're interested in, because it's really important that you spend some time finding out what's right for you. What do you, what would be the right course for you in relation to the results that you're likely to get or you have got and also the career that you want to pursue. So if we go on to the questions, We'll pick up a few of the questions in the in the chat room. OK. Are all applications followed up with an interview? The answer to that quite simply is yes. And hopefully if things continue, as Nikki said, in the way that they are, we'll be able to do all of our interviews face to face. So if you're in one of our partner schools and you apply, then our college staff will come to your school and they will interview you there. And then you will be given an offer after talking through your options and talking through your choices. You will be given an offer um, as to what grades you get and what course you can then go on to. That is only an offer. And what we would always encourage you to do is to make sure that you attend your enrollment interview after you get your results so that you know, so we can help and support you to get on to the right course. OK, so um, if you're not in one of our partner schools, once we have processed your applications, you will then be given an appointment to come into TCO 
for an interview again with the specialist staff. So everybody will get an interview and we feel that that is really, really important because that is your opportunity to talk through your options with staff, to find out a bit more of the detail with the specialist staff who will be teaching you on the course. OK, what does TCOR campus like to study? TCOR campus is a very open and interesting, vibrant campus with learners who study a wide range of courses. We offer courses through from um, level one right up to foundation degree. We have large cohorts of apprentices um, on campus. So these are people who generally work four days a week and come to college one day a week to continue their studies. So T core campus is quite diverse, quite interesting, quite different. And you find that lots of people there are of, of different ages, different abilities, studying all sorts of different courses. We have, as I've said, excellent facilities and we also um, then have uh, uh, everything to do with the learner in terms of support and any tutorial needs that you have. We have excellent facilities for you to continue your study. We have support services and I know Tom is going to pick up a bit more on that later. He's going to talk specifically about the um, the support that we offer in um, Gower College Swansea. Um, there's somebody, I'm 20 and have epilepsy. I'm currently on university. Okay, can I get funding to do an art course? Also, do I need GCSEs to do art? What I would encourage you to do is to make your application and on your application, put down any of the specific needs that you have. When you then get invited in for interview, you can discuss those needs around your art course with the people that are interviewing you, but also we have our support staff around to be able to advise you and to signpost you to the support that you need um, for to complete that course, whatever your personal needs are. So are there specific track rooms for the subjects I want to take? And if so, how do I join them? If you go onto the website, there's a link there. And I think our um, my colleagues has put the link into the chat as well. So you can just go straight into any particular room that interests you and you can come in and out and join as many of them as you want to. So the part, as somebody asks, what are the partner schools? So the partner schools are the Swansea schools that don't have six form. So we've got Ken Hengoid, we've got Dylan Thomas. So if you're in a, a Swansea school that doesn't have a six form, so in other words, finishes at um, year 11, then you will be a partner school. OK. I think that's it on um, the uh, questions that are coming through. The uh, question about the carpentry and currently in year 11, as I said earlier, so sorry if you missed it, I think it would be better if you if you join the ch uh, carpentry chat room there and I can see that um, Neris has put in the direct link there. So please follow that link and join the um, chat room for carpentry where they'll be able to give you that specific information. OK, I think I've gone through all the questions. Oh, I'm looking to do public services level two. What grades do you need to get in to do the course? So for level two, we usually ask for the range of GCSEs at C grade or below. But if you put your application in, when you get um, an interview with a team, they will be able to give you the very specifics that you need to join that course. And we will look at your grades as a whole and we will look at a development program for you to improve those grades if you need it. So my, my answer to that is uh, apply for it and then we can look at getting you an interview and discussing the exact grades that you need for that course and also discussing you any opportunities where you might want to reset one um, GCSE if you want to improve it. Another question comes through, when's the latest that we should apply for the courses? As, as Nikki pointed out earlier, the sooner you get your application in, the sooner you'll get an interview and the sooner you will get an offer. And it's really important that you get the, the applications in because where we have things like salons and workshops, we are limited to the number of students that we take. And so the sooner you get your application in and the sooner you get your interview and your offer, then your name will be on the list. Because in some instances, health and safety, say, for example, 
in a planning workshop, we can only take 16 learners when that group is full, the group is full. But you can still apply right the way through until we start in September. And some of the courses you can start into September. So the answer is get your application in as soon as possible, but don't feel that if you haven't got it in soon that there won't be a place for you at the college. Give us a ring, come in and talk to us, and we will arrange an interview for you if there's spaces on the course at a later date. Somebody says, my son wants to do an apprenticeship in plumbing. If he can't find one, then should he do level one at college? The answer to that is yes, it is. And a lot of our learners who join us, who they don't have apprenticeship because you have to secure, it's like a job, you secure an apprenticeship like a job. So you're employed by the employer and you come to college one day um, a week. So a lot of our learners who don't secure an apprenticeship straight away from college will come to us do one year on level one and then we will work with them and um, help them and support them to get an apprenticeship when they've completed level one. So please, um, if you if you don't manage to secure an apprenticeship or an apprenticeship isn't for you at that time, join us on one of our full time programmes and after a year or maybe two years, you might be ready to make that leap or an opportunity might um, come arise because of, of your work at the college. So, for example, in the plumbing team, they work closely with lots of the local plumbing employers and very often plumbing employers and other trades will come to us and ask if we've got any um, sort of learners that we would recommend. And so coming to college is, is often, even if you come as a full time learner, is a good start on your apprenticeship journey. Um, there's a question about the catering. I'm going to let Tom pick up on that because he deals with the, the support and learner services and learner experience side of, of things. So um, at this point, Tom, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you find all the information that you need this evening here. And if um, you need anything further, please just get in touch. But also we will have another open evening in March which hopefully will be face to face and you'll be able to come in and visit us and see and experience some of the specialist services and resources that I've been talking about. Thank you very much everybody. I'm going to hand you over to Tom now. Thank you, Kath. Um, last Christ star, Christ so far, good evening all. Um, welcome to the last part of the live session this evening. Um, so, and first of all, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Tom Snellgrove and I'm the Learner Experience and Wellbeing Manager in Gower College. If you've got any questions um, that you want answered, if you could pop them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. If I can't answer them, then one of my colleagues will answer them as we're going along. We, I can note this already, there's quite a number of questions in the chat that are very course specific. So for instance, what, what are the entry requirements or what will I need to get on a certain course? If I can ask you all, if you've got a question regarding course requirements or entry requirements, the, the best protocol is to go on to the chat room specific to that area where you'll get course specific information. Some of the courses are, um, the, the entry requirements are quite course specific, so they might be, a, um, a portfolio that needs to be submitted prior to or with application. So it's best to go through that um, that course to start with. So like Nikki and um, Cass have said, we are very proud of our support offer within Gower College. So I'm going to talk to you about our officially excellent rated student support at the college. We believe that the support we offer goes hand in hand and goes alongside the academic development of all our students. So we've got dedicated staff who can provide with information, support and advice on everything from course options to funding, to wellbeing support, to supporting learners with their mental health and mental and emotional health. This all starts from the tutorial that learners have when they come into college. Every learner has a tutorial. Every learner has a tu tutor assigned to them as soon as they come into college. 
Along with the tutor, though, they've also got we've also got an admissions and advice and guidance team who are there to support through the enrollment application, application and enrollment process, which then will be able to put you on the right course. We've got a large safeguarding and funding team who are able to support and make sure that every learner in the college is safe and well looked after, but also has the right advice and guidance regarding funding. We've got a large additional learning needs team. So if you've got a statement of educational needs or an IDP, if you could let the, us know at the earliest possible earliest possible stage of application, we can ensure then that that information is shared with the relevant teams. We've got transition officers who are able to come to the school, meet with yourselves, meet with the Elenco or Senko of your school, so we can know how to best support you when you come to Gower College. We've got then a neurodiversity team within the college who are here to pick to support all of the learners across the college. We've got student support officers who are assigned to each learning area so can support any learner with. Um, so a, a, there was a question answered earlier about a young carer. There's an allocated student support officer who can support them, the young carers, but along with that they can also support looked after children, so lack children or young people. They can also support um, students with financial well-being, so how to open bank accounts, where to go to, to, to get different funding queries answered. Um, homelessness, if there's any students with homelessness or any support needs that, that learners come through the door with, the student support officers can pick them up. We've also got uh, student health advisors who are, who are trained nurses. Any medical need they can support with. And if they can't support them within that, they will signpost to the right need. We've got a large enrichment and experience team who support the, the atrium areas. We've also got a large GCS active programme where learners can take part in anything from uh, uh, classroom yoga to exercising in the gym. Part of the tutorial programme as well, um, we, we support learners with UCAS and further progression and the futures applications. Whilst also supporting learners who want to go into jobs or apprentices uh, along the way. We've also support learners through counselling. Um, so learners can refer themselves or they can be referred from their tutor or from the student support officers. Well, we've also got an excellent 24 seven service called Together All. Every learner within the college can access this um, and it can be accessed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Student life is a really important part of college um, and a question got asked earlier about what the main difference is between school, uh, school and college. I think my own personal view is that the student life we offer in college is probably one of the biggest, biggest um, differences within 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 the two comparisons. There's lots going on at all the times, and one of the one of the the large things we do really really well is collect learner voice. Learners can take part in many different extracurricular activities. One of those is is joining our student union management group who are a student run body which feeds into senior management groups around the college. Now learners can do that right from the start. They can apply to do that at enrollment and then they become part of a, a, a body and a board which feeds into different groups around the college. We've got the GCS Active programme, which again is a large part of our extracurricular offer. So the GCS Active holds lots of physical and well-being activities for students, regardless of background or ability. Its true purpose is to enrich all of our learners' physical and mental well-being. So there's weekly updates that go out to every learner with many different activities. If you fancy taking a yoga class, taking a virtual reality headset, or, or for going for 
uh, a session on our spin bikes. A game of basketball is not a problem. As soon as you arrive in Gower College, if you get in touch with our GCS Active leader, they will then put you in the right place. We also encourage learners to take part and become GCS Active ambassadors. So they can, learners can then become part of, uh, or could take part in coaching qualifications, which can then lead and coach other, other groups within the college. Talking about societies and clubs, we've got a range of societies and clubs across the college. We've got 11 active clubs and societies. And, and again, we're very proud that although it has been difficult during the COVID pandemic in terms of mixing groups, we have managed to keep up the, the different clubs and societies across the college. In total, we have 11 um, and they continue to meet um, online, um, but they've also continued to, to, to make a big impact. So our recently our Islamic group um, won an award um, for the work they did during the charity week in November. Um, I'm just going to look at if there's any questions. Um, so, okay. So the question I'm going to look at is, what does a typical first day look like? And for full-time courses, are they five days a week? If, if I look back at this year, um, this year the typical first day was we had a, a welcome fest where learners, so learners had a welcome pack before they arrived. So they had a diary sent to them with, ex, with everything in that they needed prior to them starting. They also had an opportunity to explore our web page where they could take a virtual tour of the campuses and also take part in some exercises which are relevant to, the, to their course. <clears throat> as well as that, they also had opportunity to um, sign into their computer account and they also had access to the Teams pages which were set up for the learners. So learners had a lot of information before they started. On the first day, the um, learners had a fun experience. So they were able to take part in many different activities across the campus, which included tours of the campus, which inclu included, um, I'm trying to think of the right name for it, but it was inflatables, there was fun, there was free food. There was as much fun for that first day as possible. Each vocational area as well um, did their own, um, did their own course specific uh, activity. So the engineering department had a layout, had a virtual live tour of a uh, RAF base. Um, the hair and beauty area brought in a um, the makeup artist from Love Island. So just giving you a sample of what different things went on. Typically, uh, courses aren't for five days. Typically, and I say typically because we, we do try um, not to give big gaps in the day. Um, so this year, um, timetables are typically over three or four days. Do buses run from Gosina to Ticoc campus? Yes, they do run from the, from the campuses. Um, Or is that, do, or do you mean from Gosain and Town Centre? Um, I, what I'll do is when I finish, I'll, I'll come back to you on that question. Um, just going back to the questions again. So with, with reference to course specific, um, there's, there's a couple of questions in the chat regarding eSports management preview. If you could go on to the IT or business chat room, um, they'll be able to answer your question specifically for you. I play netball in school. Can I play netball in college? Yes, you certainly can. Um, we've got a thriving netball academy um, with the head of netball, actually uh, one of the Welsh um, senior team coaches. 
if you can identify a, a straightaway at enrollment um, that you're keen on being part of the Netball Academy, then um, Sarah Lewis, who is the Netball Academy uh, coordinator, will be in touch with you to work out how that can then fit into your timetable. Um, yes, you can. Our, our, um, so how can I enrol in a course for the next academic year? year? Is it through the website? So yes, you can definitely uh, apply through our website. Um, but like Kath Williams, my colleague, said earlier, um, you can also apply through your school. So if you're one of our feeder schools or our partner schools, um, you can also apply through that our partner schools and we will then come to your partner to your school and we will do the interview in your school. Um, but the key thing, um, like both uh, Kath and Nikki said, is if you could apply as early as possible. Um, so for some of the vocational courses, which are limited to certain numbers, um, that the earlier the, the earlier you apply, um, the better it is. I submitted my application some time ago, but to, but to hear anything, should I apply again? No, if, if you've applied, um, we will contact you. Um, and like my colleague said, my ne colleague said, Nikki, Nikki said earlier, you will hear something in the next week or so. We are just going through a phase now of sending out um, interviews. If you don't hear anything in the next two weeks, then please, yes, please email us to, to find out where you are. I'm just checking I've answered everything. So the, there's a question about what minimum results needed at GCSE to enroll at college to do medicine. Um, I, I can, we'll, I'll come back to you later regarding that. Um, it is probably more of a sign and A level based question um, or it could be a science question. Um, so what, what may be a good idea um, is if you go to the science chat room um, with science and they'll be able to answer your question for you. If not, then myself, Nikki or Kath will answer that later. Um, and the answer to when it's best to put in an application, if you could um, put in an application as soon as possible, um, th that would be great as well. OK, um, Chrysio and Diak, thank you for listening um, to me this evening. Um, I'm going to bring my section to an end now. Um, just one takeaway from me. We're really proud about the care support and guidance that we give all the learners and you can make of college everything you want um, and we're here to provide that support for you. Diak. Diolch am y mean o'r sesiwn holi ac ateb. Mae'r sesiwn wedi gorff yn nawr ond rydym yn ateb y cwestiynau ychwanegol. Os oes gennych rhagor o gwestiynau, dylunwch y link yr oedolen i ymuno ar ystafledoedd sgwrsio neu e-bostwch marketing at gcs.ac.uk. Thank you for joining our Q&A session this evening. The session has now finished and we're replying to all questions. If you have any more questions, please follow the link on this page, which will take you to our chat rooms. Alternatively, email marketing at gcs.ac.uk. Jochen Vau, many thanks. <laughs>